Hi there, welcome to Architect Interview Question Series. Here we are covering a lot of questions on system design, system architecture, software architecture, and this is series from Knowledge Powerhouse. Let's go on to our next question. Question is what are the benefits of microservices architecture? These days, microservices architecture is quite popular. So let's see what are the benefits that microservices architecture provides. Prior to microservices architecture, we had monolithic architecture. So monolith is like a one big giant piece of code base that has like all kind of features and all kind of services within that self. But in microservices, we have a small and autonomous piece of code and that will do, do only one thing very well, right? So this uh, microservices focus on doing some specific tasks and doing it in an excellent way in a big system. Like, I mean, if you want to develop a e-commerce system, so you can have a like product listing service, you can have an order service, you can have a inventory management service. So that way you can have different, different kind of microservices that are doing specific tasks. Like you can have a product recommendation service, you can add those features as a service. So in this example, I mean, if you see the UI is a different microservice, then shipping is a different microservice, accounting is another, then we have management, engineering. So all that, they are different kind of microservices in a big system. So microservice is also considered as an autonomous entity. It can be designed, developed, and deployed independently. Like, I mean, you can come up with a product recommendation service, or you can have some service to like you know uh, for some kind of uh, managing some money managing some ledger account so you can have those kind of uh, autonomous services and design them develop them and deploy them independently and in general like popular practices to implement it as a rest service restful web service on http protocol with technology agnostic api because uh, if you do technology agnostic, then with different programming languages, your service can be called. So that is the benefit of using it as a REST service on HTTP protocol. And most of the microservices, they have their own databases. And in ideal condition, a microservice does not share the database with any other service. There are a few instances where microservices may share the database or may not have any database, but most of the cases, we implement it in such a way that each microservice has its own database, it manages its own data. Then scalability, this is the benefit of microservices that if we have multiple microservices instead of one monolith, then we can scale the specific service that is being used heavily. Like in this example, I mean, if you see, if we have to scale up, then the whole monolith has to be scaled up. So this big square has to become much bigger. Whereas in the case of microservices, out of this triangle, circle, or, or square, whichever is the one getting heavily used, we can just scale that specific service. Like, I mean, if you have a product search service or product buy service, now the frequency of calling product search is much higher than that of product buy service, right? So in such a case, you can just scale up the product search service so that it can run on multiple servers, whereas product service, product buy service can be on lesser number of hardware, right? Because less number of people are buying it, right? Then comes resiliency. So in microservices architecture, if one service can go down, it may not affect the rest of the system. So that way resiliency is increased, it will keep working and the other parts can keep functioning. For example, if you have a product recommendation service and product buy service, so if product recommendation is not working, that service is going down, still your product buy service can keep running, right? So that way, even if one service goes down, we can implement it in such a way that whole system keeps working even with some parts not functioning. Then another benefit comes from technology mix. Like nowadays we are having different kinds of technologies, different kinds of Java versions, different kinds of versions in the platforms, cloud computing. So using microservice, you can adopt new technologies with lesser risk and whereas in monolith if you have to go you have to upgrade the version for whole of the monolith whereas in microservice you can pick up some language some uh, like you know new version 
independently and that way you can get good benefit out of microservices architecture then reuse reuse is another benefit we can get from microservice where like whatever lessons we learn from one service they can be applied to another service and i mean similar kind of architecture we can use so that way it's easier to like develop more microservices in a faster way and also we can have more kind of automation in developing those microservices and they can share their lessons that way it's much easier one more benefit of microservices is easy deployment nowadays time to market is an important concept we want to make sure that our features reach with production like in a faster time right so for that faster turnaround time we can implement a smaller set of uh, like microservices and these microservices can be deployed smoothly and like very fast to production so and if anything goes wrong then you can roll back that microservice and system can come back to the previous state whereas in case of monolith you have to extensively plan like a big amount of like release how do you deploy it all that kind of everything takes place which is a much longer planning cycle so in microservice like even daily people are delivering features to production and last but not least debugging so this is like a controversial point some people say that in microservices it is easier to debug and some say in microservices it is difficult to debug but i would say that if you have implemented correctly microservices then it is very easy to isolate the problem and you can find a specific microservice that is not working and just find that what is the issue with it and then you can find the problem and fix it so that way debugging is easier in the production with microservices architecture and it can lead to quicker resolution of the problems all right uh, that's all on microservices topic and the benefits of microservices architecture do try to use it structure this question if you have further more questions on microservices, uh, watch our complete series. And if you want to have like something which is not covered, do mention in the comments and we'll be happy to answer for you. All right, thank you everyone. Have a great day.